very good rule of life. So, uh, depending on the rankings, uh, you guys are anywhere from first to fifth in special teams, and uh, I think we've asked you this before, but the last couple of weeks, I think special teams have played a huge role. Uh, do you take pride in those rankings? Do you believe that they're justified? How do you think you guys have played this year? Yeah, you know, as far as the rankings go, there's, I, I've seen a bunch of different ones. I know some, like, analytical ones, and there's some ones that use statistics and kind of group them together. And so I think that's why there's a bunch of different ones. You know, obviously, we're always striving to be, you know, at the top of that. I mean, you know, at all, any of that. I mean, some of them, I think some of them take some with a grain of salt, and, and, I, and I put some more stock into others because, you know, what I think, what I, what I deem is more important. I think sometimes statistics might not tell the whole story. Uh, I'm very pleased so far through 12 games with – uh, you know, the fact that we've made a lot of big plays and, and it affected a lot of the games in a positive way. Uh, you know, as, as a special teams coach, you're always looking to, to change the game in some way, shape, or form, whether that's change the field, flip the field position, uh, make a big play, uh, you know, spark the team. You know, a lot of times you see a special team, you know, you guys have seen enough football in your day that you know that when you watch a game, a special teams play can really change the momentum of the game, whether that's a big return or a block or, you know, a, a, a punt that's down, you know, down inside the 10 or whatever. So, you know, that's what we're always looking to do, looking to change the game. Sometimes, statistics don't tell the whole story uh and so getting back to the rankings part of it yeah it's, listen it's great uh you know to get to get mentioned like that but i think you know, to me as long as we're affecting the game in a positive way we're, we're, we stay consistent those are the, those are the things that we really you know strive for and uh you know through 12 games we've been able to do that you know we certainly haven't been perfect we're certainly some things that uh i'm not pleased with i think we can be a little bit more consistent I don't like the roller coaster ride as much, so you know, as much as, as sometimes we, we've been on. But uh, I think we've really made some positive plays. And the other, the other nice thing is when you look at our uh, team overall, it hasn't been one person. You know, we, it hasn't been one-sided. It's been a lot of different people that have affected games in different ways. Whether it has been the kicker, the punter, a returner, a core player. You know, there's been a bunch of different guys that have made plays, and so I take a lot of pride in that. What, how would you? What, what formula would you use to? I mean, you say you, statistics aren't the end all be all. What, what criteria would you use to prove? You know, it, it really there's a lot of different ways to attack special teams. So it really depends on what a team is trying to do. For example, uh, for example, there might be teams that uh, are not kicking the ball away into the end zone and, and are running down and covering more kicks than others. There might be some teams that are pulling the ball out of the end zone more uh, than others. You know, and, and their kickoff return yards is going to be different. Uh, there's different ways to do go about the the punt game. For example, uh, some teams are driving the ball far and maybe their gross number is really high. Some people are striving more for a net type of thing. So there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to attack it from a schematic standpoint, and you know, and so it really, a lot of that plays into it. So sometimes statistically, you may see a really big number for some team and a smaller number for another team, but that smaller number may be more effective for the way they play the game and the way they they game plan. So it doesn't always tell the whole story. It tells some of the story, it just doesn't always tell the whole story. But uh, again, I think. Uh, yeah, the good thing is, if you look at our special teams throughout the year so far, and, and, and again, we're always striving to continue that, is we've made plays in, in all the different phases. It hasn't been lopsided, and hey, we're just a, you know, I, I don't like just being a great return team, but our coverage is lousy. We're being a great coverage team. And our t- we've had some balance there, and this is one of the years uh, when you look at our, from right now through 12 games, we've had a lot of balance in the special teams throughout, whether, you know, all the different phases, and that's been, that's been a positive to this point. When you went to Albuquerque in March, did you know going into that meeting that Jason Sanders is the guy I most like among college kickers? Was he merely part of a group, and you had no idea if you would like him or not? But I knew I liked, liked what I saw prior to the prior to the visit. Uh, I really liked, you know, you really saw a lot of explosion in his leg and, and different things, and so I was really anxious and I was really uh, looking forward to that visit. I, I would at that point, Barry, when I went there, I didn't have a, t- a final ranking, and so you know, I, I did know what I, I liked, what I saw. When I, when I came out of the workout, I was even more pleased when I spent more time with him. And it was kind of every step of the way uh, along the journey with Jason. You know, I kind of liked what, you know, more and more and more. And we brought him out here for a visit. Just got a chance to spend some time with him and kind of dissect his, 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 his brain a little bit and, and kind of his approach and uh, got to know the person a little bit better. And so it was kind of like, so when I went out there, I wasn't really kind of set in, any, in anything yet. But then once we fin- kind of finished the process, I, I think we definitely had him higher on the list than most people did. Yeah. And does, no, no doubt. And does the calm demeanor at all mean anything to you in terms of how a kicker comports himself off the field? Does that, do you suggest, 
this guy is likely going to become in game situations? Yeah, you definitely look at a personality. I think I've mentioned this before with Jason. Uh, first of all, he's a very level-headed guy, never too high, never too low. I think that's a really good uh, mindset for a specialist. You know, I, I, you've heard me liken it to a, a golfer before, you know, or a batter in the batter's box or, you know, into some other uh, analogies. <clears throat> I think it's really good to have a calm demeanor. You're never going to be perfect. There's no kicker. It's ever been perfect. You're going to have your plays where you have to be able to respond. And so I think that personality is big. And, and, and so I do think in my spending time with him throughout the draft process, I got to know him a lot as a person. And to me, coupled with his ability, that's why we thought and we'd take the risk on him. And I really thought it was a, it was a, you know, a, a pretty good uh, situation in, at that point. And I felt very strongly about him as a, as a person going into it. You know? Can you explain so? to me all the roles while Aikens plays and what he means to your special teams unit? Yeah, I'll start with what he means. Uh, you know, Walt's leadership has really been his, uh, the really last two years has really picked up uh, tremendously in terms of just him being a more vocal guy. I think when Walt first got here, you certainly saw him make some plays, and you certainly saw his athletic ability flash, and you saw him. You know, you saw all that. I think where Walt has taken a major step forward in the last two years is in a leadership role and starting to be kind of the role model, if you will, for the special teams room. And so he means an awful lot. His energy, his emotion, you see him on the field. Uh, he's, he's definitely a guy that's a, a catalyst, if you will, on the sideline. Uh, he's very much into the game, emotional guy, all, energy, effort, all that. That's really, really what he means to the room. And so... Uh, that's really, really important. In terms of the different roles that he plays, you know, Walt's done a little bit of everything for us. I mean, certainly he's a, he's a gunner on punt. Uh, we move him around in the punt block return game uh, where he's played a def he could be a blocker, he could be a rusher, he could be a bunch of different things. Uh, on our kickoff team, he's also done a bunch of different things. He's been a, everything from a what we call a speed five and from a, to a contained player to a safety. So uh, throughout his years here, he's played multiple roles. Same thing in the kick return game. We're able to move him around. Uh, it might sometimes it might be a matchup, a game plan, uh, but he's very versatile, and uh, he's certainly not a not a one trick pony, if you will. He's a guy that we can move around and do a lot of different things with, and and so he brings that to the table. In order, you know, special teams are a little bit like a chess match in in terms of you know you're you're moving pieces around and, and kind of trying to predict the opponent's next. You know, different, not no different than offense and defense, but special teams is a little bit more of a matchup game than offense defense. You know, you see a lot of times you get if you create some mismatches on special special teams you end up with a either successful or unsuccessful play depending on which side of it you're on Walt gives us gives us the ability to move him around and create some of those matchups you know maybe some mismatches for us or or and he get pre presents some yeah presents some matchup problems for the opponent so he's like a Michael Jordan of your special teams unit I'm Mike not comparing Brady. anybody to Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not Tom Brady of your special teams unit. <laughs> you know the heat that I'm going to take if I sit here and, and compare Walt Higgins to Michael Jordan. I got to go in front of all those guys now. Uh, no, I got a lot of respect for Michael Jordan. Uh, what he does for us is he, again, where he, he's able to play a lot of different roles for us. So whatever name you want to throw out there. But uh, it, he's, he, listen, uh, I'm happy as heck when we sign him in the offseason. Love having him here. I love what he does every day at practice. He's an, he's an energizer guy. He's a guy that gets everybody going. He's always, uh, you know, he, he gets me going some, some mornings, to be honest with you. And I see him, and he gets me fired up to get in there and get in front of everybody and get the game plan out and, and get everybody going in the meeting. So it, it's, it's, you know, I can't say enough positive things about him. It's great to have him. Was it this last game that Charles Harris almost had a punt block? It was. It was. How close was it? And uh, I have a little anxiety about it. Yeah, we should have blocked the punt. Uh, I mean, I mean to forget, about, forget about the scheme and all that. I mean, Charles ended up pass the ball. You know, there's a uh, I can get real technical on it, but when you're blocking a punt, you really don't want to leave your feet. You know, from a, from a technique standpoint, Charles got a little giddy. You know, I don't know what the word is, but he jumped, and that caused him to kind of miss the ball. We timed it up well. It was a, a you know protection breakdown by the opponent. And Charles got there, and he actually the ball went almost behind him. If you know his arms were out, and the ball kind of went I, I look like I went through him for crying out loud so uh but no you know I got upset because those are game changing plays that is what I talked about earlier those are game changing plays and and you know been doing this long enough to know that if you make a game changer like that it completely changes the football game and if we can imagine that ball getting blocked and going the other way whether we score or not the field position flips going to be about 40 or 50 yards if we don't score and so that that is again it creates a snowball effect and changed the entire game. And so, you know, I, 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 it was a missed opportunity. You know, a lot of people are 
you know, all happy that we tipped the ball, and I'm, I'm pissed off because we should have blocked and went the other way with it, you know, and uh, just in my estimation, that was a missed opportunity, but, um, you know, so be it, and that's what I mean about, you know, we've made a lot of positive plays, but there, I feel like in some games, there's been some opportunities we've left out on the table, that's just one of them, and so, you know, that's really what happened on that one, so we did get a piece of it, we did force a bad punt, um, but it could have been so much better, you know, so those are the little things we just got to get better at, and we've had a few of those. Been here for a number of years, and you know what it's like when you go to Gillette and how difficult it is to play the Patriots up there. You know that the Patriots in just about every NFL stadium have a pretty good record, mm -hmm. and yet down here of late, of late, that's not the case. What is it you see out of your guys as they're getting ready to play the Patriots, especially you know coming down in December? Is there a change, or what's going on that the Dolphins always seem to play either their best game or one of their best games when they play New England down here? Well, I mean, I, th I think, first of all, Hal, I think the natural rivalry certainly has something to do with it. I mean, you know, this is our a division opponent that's won the division for X amount of years, however many they've won it. You, know, you, you guys know all the stats. And uh, it's certainly a challenge for us every time, whether it's there or here. Um, you know, I, th I think, obviously, we're, you're always trying to protect your home. And I think if you look throughout our division, I think all of our – um, if you look at all of our division opponents, I think all of them are pretty are pretty darn good at, at, at their home. I think we've done a pretty good job, especially since Adam's been here, protecting our home turf. Our win percentage is pretty good at home against everybody, not just the Patriots. And, uh, you, know, you know, certainly I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that, that it's not a little extra incentive when you have that. Uh, usually when they come to town, they're in first place. That's the way the, the, the division's gone. It's calling it the truth. And, uh, you know, we, we certainly know how important the division games are. And so not only the Patriots, but the Bills and the Jets included. Any time a division opponent is coming in, you know, you treat those division wins like they're, like they're a couple of wins. And, uh, you know, because usually those division wins are very, very important. And, uh, you know, so I think that certainly has something to do with it. I think our guys get a little more locked in in the division opponents. Again, not just the Patriots, uh, but all the division opponents are a little bit more, you know, those are natural rivalries because you play those teams twice. And so, you know, I don't know if that has, has anything to do with it. I know people talk about the weather and all that good stuff, but, you know, I, I've been here long enough to tell you that, you know, we've, we've also lost to some northern teams here, uh, you know, that, where the weather maybe didn't affect it. So I, 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 it's never one thing. I mean, there's always, there's always a couple factors involved. But to sit here and tell you our guys don't get a little bit more amped up for the division opponents at home, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fibbing. So I, you know, I think there's a little bit more ad, uh, extra incentive there. And, uh, you know, whatever it is, we've done fairly well against those guys for the last few times here. So, you know, but I think our guys are locked in. And, again, usually, like I said, when they come to town, they're usually leading the division. So I think, you know, you're, you're playing the first-place team, and your guys are, you know, there's a little more added incentive there. Thank you. Thank you. you got it, guys. Appreciate it.